After getting the architectural plan of a building, the structural engineer has to decide the position and orientation of columns, followed by positioning of beams, spanning of slabs, the layout and planning of stairs, and finally selecting the proper type of footing. In this lecture, I am going to discuss how we can decide the position of columns while doing the structural planning. One common practice is to place columns at or near the corners of a building as well as at the intersections of beams or walls. This picture illustrates the placement of columns at the intersections of walls and at the corners of a building. The primary purpose of columns is to provide support to the beams which are placed underneath the walls to provide support. However, in certain exceptional cases, it may not be feasible to place a column at the junction of walls such as when the column is located along the property line. This can pose challenges in providing footing for such columns due to space limitations. To overcome this, the columns can be shifted inward along a cross wall to accommodate the footing within the property line as depicted in this picture. Alternatively, we can provide a strap footing or a combined footing as you can see in this picture. Another important consideration is the span of the beams as it affects the size and cost of the beams. Larger spans of beams should preferably be avoided for economy reasons. The span of the beam is determined by the spacing of columns and when the span becomes larger, the required depth of the beam is also increased, thus increasing its self-weight and the total load. This is because the moment governing the beam design is directly proportional to the square of the span and the load as evident from the bending moment equation. Therefore, a larger span for the beam leads to a notable increase in the size, that's the depth of the beam. When it comes to columns, the impact due to increase in length on the total load and column size is negligible as long as the column is short. As a result, columns are generally more cost effective compared to beams in terms of unit cost. Let's consider the structural layout as depicted in this picture, which presents two alternatives. To create a two-span continuous beam for AB, a single column can be placed at C. Alternatively, two columns can be installed at E and G to form a three-span continuous beam for AB. In case 1, spans AC and CB will be larger and the beam will have to carry two point loads, one at E and the other at G, transferred from secondary beams. This will require a heavier section for the beam. On the other hand, in case 2, with two columns provided at E and G, the beam becomes a three-span continuous beam. The length of the beam is reduced and it only needs to carry one point load at C, which is located on the central span. This further reduces the bending moments in the outer spans AE and GB without a significant increase in design moment in portion EG, resulting in a considerable reduction in the cost of the beam. Hence, the increase in cost due to provision of two columns at E and G compared to providing a single column at C is likely to be relatively less than the increase in the cost of the beam when providing a single column at E. Therefore, second alternative is expected to be more cost effective. In general, for beams carrying LIO loads up to 4 kN per meter square, the maximum spans may be limited to these values. It's also important to avoid larger spacing between columns. Larger spacing between columns not only results in longer spans for beams, but also increases the load on the columns, leading to bulky columns in the lower floors of a multi-story building. The use of larger column sections may cause offsets from walls, thus obstructing the available floor area. Additionally, it's important to select the position of columns in a way that minimizes the bending moment in the beams. When two columns are located very close together, such as at the corner of a building or where walls intersect, it is advisable to provide only one column at that position in order to minimize the bending moment in the beam. Small offsets like PQ are included in building design for architectural purposes. The question then arises whether to place a column at point P or point Q. If a column is provided only at P, Beam B1 will transfer a concentrated load at point Q, resulting in a longer span and higher bending moment in beam B3. Conversely, if the column is placed at Q with no column at P, 
द रिएक्शन ऑफ बीम बी टू एट पी विल जनरेट ए हॉगिंग मोमेंट इन द कैंटिलेवर पी क्यू रिड्यूसिंग द सैगिंग बेंडिंग मोमेंट इन बीम बी थ्री दस इंस्टॉलिंग ए कॉलम एट क्यू इज अ मोर कॉस्ट इफेक्टिव ऑप्शन सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट दिस लेक्चर यू कैन चेक आउट द कंप्लीट बिल्डिंग डिजाइन कॉम्बो कोर्स ऑन ई टैब्स एंड सेफ वेर इन यू विल गेट टू वर्क ऑन सिक्स सेपरेट मॉडल्स इन ई टैब्स एंड द कंप्लीट फाउंडेशन डिजाइन इन सेफ Again if you want to develop the proper skill set required for a site engineer that too without going to the site then you can enroll in our complete site engineer course which is available in both hindi and english the link of the courses will be provided in the description box of this video thank you